Whoa! My hands are on the steering wheel, but no, I'm not driving this car. The climbing and spinning are actually the result of this motion base, or what's known in Hollywood as a gimbal. And it's controlled with this, the Waldo, a mini replica of the larger gimbal base. A skilled operator can make it look like a car is spinning out of control, a motorcycle is bumping along a road, or a luxury yacht is sinking. Now, a lot of these types of sets could move on their own, but letting the special effects team at NACFX fake the movements can actually lead to more realistic results on screen. Like in Hubie Halloween. The bike you see is actually on top of a cart. It made more sense to be able to put it in a safe, confined environment to where he was sitting on the bike and he could do all of his kind of funny gags while still be moving through the neighborhood. But you have to balance safety and freedom of movement. The bicycle was on the center of it, and we made it on gas shock so he could lean side to side, he could free pedal, and we also made it so the wheels would spin on it. But moving a set is not a one-size-fits-all solution, which is why NAC switches between different motion bases. Like one of the most rudimentary, the airbag. The setup consists of four bags filled with air to lift the vehicle. The crew will simultaneously move these metal pipes to create basic shaking motions. This is a very old process. Okay. They've been doing this for years and years. I mean, this is probably how they did the car driving scenes in I Love Lucy. Probably should put my seatbelt on. All right, I'm driving through the jungle terrain. Let's go. Nowadays, the airbag is best if you need a few bumps on the road. But when it came to day shift, NAC had to safely film insert shots of the movie's young actress while matching all of the twists and turns of this car chase. And you see him crash, woo! Their NACMO bases come in handy for these situations. These come in four different sizes. The Mini-Mo, the NACMO, the Mighty-Mo, and the Mo. The vehicle is first raised up onto the base by a forklift. The team will strap it down by its wheels so the suspension can still function. The steering works freely, so to make it sort of realistic, you're gonna want to steer as it's leaning. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> I'm hanging on for dear life. You're doing a great job. It takes some getting used to. There are six axes of motion to each base. Each of them has 27 degrees of pitch, 27 degrees of roll, and it has plus minus 20 degrees of yaw, which is this twist here. They could also heave, which is this straight up and down. And they could surge, which is this here. This is surge. Trust that I'm in good hands. <laughs> Gimbal's moving, Joe! Here we go! Let's go! Looks like a roller coaster. <laughs> this is like really awesome. These bases are capable of small, minute movements that can replicate any surface. How you program the gimbal will change based on the type of vehicle you're programming it for. Take the yacht from the Wolf of Wall Street. A boat doesn't move the same way as a car or motorcycle. I love you. Just hold on tight. So Jesse used this gimbal to create grand and sweeping movements to match what the motion of the open ocean would realistically look like. So if we had a boat on here, it'd be kind of interacting with the waves. The boat is always going to want to kind of go back to level for buoyancy. And those six degrees of motion elevated the movements as the yacht goes through the storm. We could be rolling it side to side, putting a little bit of pitch and some heave in there. Jesse can also control how smooth the movements are. And you don't always want every move to be fluid. When it comes to helicopter scenes like in Iron Man 3 and Jumanji, Jesse might lower the smoothness from a three, which he uses for a calm ocean, down to a level two. You always want to make sure that you've got some vibration happening without that, it doesn't really work. It is really what sells a helicopter, is that constant turbulence. But making movements read well on camera is just as much about the operator's technique. Like when it comes to plane turbulence. And this man, NAC founder Mark Noel, would know, having worked on True Lies, Sully, and Almost Famous. He also worked on Titanic, which featured its fair share of turbulence. For Almost Famous, director Cameron Crowe needed to get the most genuine reactions from the cast for this scene. So Mark started the actors with small movements and saved the big ones for last. He's watching the performance and then he kind of like would catch them when they're not really aware and then and then just we'd slam it. You want to keep the, the movements minimal in the beginning to really be able to sell the broader moves when you're getting into your crash situation. 
Sometimes one set requires multiple bases. In flight, the crew put the plane set on an airbag for smaller bumps. Then for even rougher turbulence, they used the NACMO base. Once the plane fully goes upside down, the crew move to a rig capable of spinning the actors 360 degrees. However, you don't always have to switch bases to get the right movements. That day shift truck had to move in all different directions. So the crew modified the base by adding a turntable, which could spin the car around 360 degrees. And you can see by the look on Joe's face, it's spinning pretty good up there. The more exaggerated the moves get, the more add-ons are needed. In Oz the Great and Powerful, Mark mounted this hot air balloon basket set to a turntable placed on top of the base. But he then had to send the balloon into a tornado. They just wanted it to gyrate all around and then come back the other way. All the lines went to an armature which supports all the rigging and then we had shock cord to keep it kind of taunt and then that went to the ceiling to keep it so that when the motion base went up and down and spun, it has swivel on it, all the rigging would go with it. Mark estimates this action took 10 tries to get right. But whether it's a hot air balloon or a car, Jesse and Mark don't have to memorize every single move. That's because the Waldo controlled moves are all fed through this computer. With that, they can record each move and play it back for multiple takes. They took this precision a step further when working on these creatures for the Mandalorian by 3D scanning the rigs, creating the moves in advance, and then importing those into the base. And outside factors can really sell the movements, like a wind machine accompanying a motorcycle, or water splashing in the exact right direction with a boat's moves. No bit of a detail in a moving set can be just for show. What reads really well with aircrafts and helicopters is the set dressing in the actual aircraft. So if you had like cargo netting, wires or anything hanging or dangling, that reads really well. The going up and going down, it was authentic to what it'd be like going up and down a really a bumpy terrain. It's a very unique sensation. Yeah. 